Hello, and welcome to the next chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help familiarize you and improve your skills with Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate. In today's short lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a panoramic photograph. A panorama is simply a series of photographs stitched together to create one bigger picture, usually horizontally, but sometimes vertically. Some cameras even have helpful panoramic features built in, such as indicators where your last picture ended, so you know where to take the next one in the series. Here are some tips if you want to create the best panoramic photo. First, use a tripod so your photos will line up more evenly. Then, lock both the AE and the AF features on your camera to lock the exposure and focus on your camera. This will help eliminate visual changes across pictures. Try to overlap each photo by about 20 to 25 percent. This will help in the stitching process too. But even if you don't do this, all is not lost. Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate has tools to fix these issues while you create your panorama. Whereas a lot of image editing applications have automatic stitching features to create panoramics, Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate does not have this feature yet. But again, we can get around this and oftentimes create better results. Let's get started. First, import all the photos you want to use to create a single panoramic photo. For the sake of time, I'm going to use just three photos I took of the Waimea Canyon on Kauai. Now we need a window wide enough to place our images and stitch them together. So let's go to File, New. From the long list of presets at the top here, go down and choose, appropriately enough, Panorama. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up each of the images, copy, go back to the other one, and paste. I'm going to do this in the order I want them to be laid out. Each time I do so, Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate creates and puts the new photo in a new raster layer. So I'll do that for all three images. If my images were bigger than their panoramic window, they would be cropped to fit. If they are smaller, as in this case, we can crop the whole window later. And since I no longer need the individual images, I'll close them up. And using the Move tool, I will then move my images in the order where they need to be. Looks like this one needs to be over here, that one in the middle, and those on the end. Okay, we're pretty close here. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see a little better. All right, and I'm going to close down my Learning Center just to give us some additional room here. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, again, with my pick tool, I'm going to move the images in the order that I need them, which I've done so far. Then I'm going to visually and manually overlap them until I see them fit correctly. What's going to help me out is I'm actually going to reduce the opacity of the one I'm going to be laying on the top. So I'll be able to kind of see the other image underneath and then use my arrow keys to line things up until I get them just right. Once I'm done with each one, I'll increase the opacity back to 100% and select the next one and do the same thing. That's actually a pretty good match as far as lining up the objects on the screen. Okay, let's do some further editing here. I'm going to use the cropping tool to make it a nice rectangular image. Now, the only issue I seem to have left are these rather distracting visible lines where the images overlap. This happened because, well, I didn't follow my own tips by locking the AE exposure on my camera. But let's see what we can do to fix this as much as possible. Now, I could use the clone tool, which is right here. But instead, I'm going to use the eraser tool with a setting of about 50 on the opacity. And then go over each photograph, do the one on the top. Don't set it to the one underneath. And this should blend together pretty well. What also might help is if I choose the right image, but what also might help is if you had like a pressure sensitive tablet like something from Wacom. The last things you want to do, since they're all in separate layers, and you maybe want to edit the entire photograph, say for color, contrast, and brightness, right now you can only do one layer at a time. So what we'll do is we'll right click on one of the layers over here, go to merge, and flatten all the layers down to one image. Now, if we wanted to, we could do some more editing on our photograph. And there you have it. Thanks again, and we'll see you in our next chapter.